What's up? Medite here. And in this video, we're going to go through the different salivary glands you have around the oral cavity. So the salivary glands are divided based on their size. There are the minor salivary glands that are scattered throughout the oral cavity, and there are the major salivary glands, which has ducts that open into the oral cavity to secrete out their saliva. But first, we need to address some words I'm going to use throughout this video so that you understand the whole idea regarding the salivary glands. Our saliva is made up of two components. There's a serous component and there's a mucus component. The serous component contains enzymes that help us digest the food we eat. And the mucus component is mucus that lubricates the inner surface of our mouth as well as lubricating the food we eat so that it passes easily down the next step of the digestive system. And these two components are produced by two different glands. They're the serous glands and the mucus glands. So let's talk about these a little bit. The serous gland looks like this. It contains a lot of granules that produce watery secretion containing enzymes like alpha amylates. Mucus glands look like this. They stain lighter than the serous gland because they don't have these granules that the serous gland does. And it mainly produces mucin that absorbs water to form a lubricating secretion called mucus. Then there's a combination of those called seromucus glands, which look like this, that produces both mucus and enzymes. All right, now that you have a general knowledge of the different glands, let's start with the minor salivary glands. The minor salivary glands are scattered throughout the oral cavity and they produce saliva continuously without any neuronal stimulation. The majority of those glands are going to be seromucus glands. There are the minor salivary glands in the lips, called labial glands. There are the glands in the buccal region, called the buccal glands. There are the palatine glands and the lingual glands. These are the main minor salivary glands that we have in the oral cavity. Then we have the major salivary glands, which look like this. They are the parotid gland, submandibular gland, and the sublingual gland. Cool, let's start with the parotid gland, which is this one. Now, there are three things that I want you to remember when it comes to the parotid gland. One is that it's the largest salivary gland you have. Two is that it contains purely serous glands, meaning it doesn't have any mucus glands or seromucus glands. Its main function is to produce watery secretion containing enzymes. And three is that it's located on the lateral surface of the head, ventral to the oracle, as you see here. Cool. So the parotid gland consists of a superficial part, as you see here, which lies between the zygomatic arch and the angle of the mandible. Then the gland is going to turn around the mandible to reach the inner surface. And that part is called the deep part, which lies in the retromandibular fossa. And keep in mind that the parotid gland is covered by a fascia called the parotid fascia, which is a fascia that fuses with the masseter fascia anteriorly. When the parotid gland produces its serous secretion, it's going to send them through a duct called the parotid duct, or sometimes also referred to as the Stenson's duct. And this duct is going to open up here, at the upper side of the cheeks. And the opening of the parotid duct has a papilla around it, called the papilla of the parotid duct. And here just to help you visualize it, this circle is the opening of the parotid duct into the oral cavity, and this is the papilla, which are small elevations around the parotid opening. Above the parotid duct, you will find a small gland called the accessory parotid gland, which also assists in producing saliva. Next, we have the submandibular glands, which are these ones highlighted here in yellow. The submandibular gland contains seromucus glands, meaning that they produce both digestive enzymes as well as mucin that goes with, together with water to produce mucus. It lies in the submandibular space, as you see here. So it lies mainly under the mylohyoid muscle, but part of the gland actually curves around the posterior end of this muscle and ends up in the sublingual space. It has a duct called the submandibular duct, or sometimes also referred to as the Warchen's duct which opens up in the middle of the floor of the oral cavity in an elevation called the sublingual caruncle. So that is the submandibular gland. Then we have the sublingual gland. And the sublingual gland is located in the sublingual space, as you see here. This is the sublingual gland. The anterior part of the gland is seromucus, 
and the posterior part of the gland is purely mucus. Now, the sublingual gland is special in that it has two types of ducts. It has the major sublingual duct, or duct of Bartholin, which joins with the submandibular duct to open into the sublingual caruncle, and it has the minor sublingual ducts, which open as small holes within the sublingual folds. So that was everything I had about the salivary glands. If you found this video helpful, please put a like, share, comment, whatever you find convenient to you. See you next time.